You guys get winter here too. You'll get it. You'll get it pretty soon. Like tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> Black people, we don't like the winter. Nope. Because <laughs> you can see us. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Black people will never get caught in a blizzard. You ever hear that happen to people? They get trapped in their cars somewhere. It's usually you white people. You're out driving somewhere where you don't belong. Someone in your car goes, We should take a shortcut through the mountains! A week later, you're eating one another. <laughs> That'll never happen to black people. We'll get out of our car, take all of our clothes off, lay in the snow. The helicopters will find us very quickly. <laughs> There they are. They look like Rolos. <laughs> My wife helps me on stuff that I don't want help on at all. I, like, I don't like winter. Like, I don't like winter. Like, I hate winter. Like, I'm originally from North Carolina. And like, look, right now, you guys are having beautiful weather. And thank you for doing that, okay? I love it. Like, I, I hate winter so much, I'm for global warming. I am. I am voting for it, marching for it. I might start buying people SUVs. I don't care. Ladies, start using hairspray again. No ozone. That's our goal. You know what's nice? 70 degrees in February. That's not. Ah. And see, there's people with me, but there's always a couple of crunchy granolas sitting around. The crunchy granolas sitting there thinking, but the polar rice caps are gonna melt and we're all gonna flood. No, we're not. We're not all gonna flood. We're only losing Rhode Island, Long Island, and Jersey. Bye bye. <laughs> Here's a canoe, get to safety. <laughs> But anyway, I don't like winter. Like, it's a risk. Like, look, I fly out here. Like, I've driven places, like, during the winter, and it's a risk. Like, you don't know what they do. Like, I don't know, like, snow plow and all that kind of stuff. I was traveling one time, and I was, like, there was a snowstorm, right? I had to go from one town to the other town on the same night, and there's a snowstorm, right? On a normal, regular day, it takes, like, 45 minutes, okay? But now I'm in the snowstorm, all right? And it's up in the mountains, okay? Like, it's, uh, you know mountain people? You know mountain people? <laughs> like, I stopped for gas. The guy's like, you want to fill it up? I'm like, back it up. Earl. You're scaring me, okay? He was that kind of big guy. Like, you know mountain guys, when they get so big, they can't walk normal. Like, they have to walk with their hands out front, which is just a weird look. Like, don't you walk with your hand, like, side, right? Like, you don't march. But you... Like, you walk, right? That's just a look that says, I got bodies in the basement. I like biscuits. So I have to get from one town to the other town, okay? Normal, regular day, 45 minutes. But now there's a snowstorm. I'm on this interstate in the middle of nowhere, okay? And I'm in a line of traffic, all right? It's 10 cars, and we're all behind a tractor trailer because it makes tracks in the snow. Because everything's white. It's all white. Road's white, dirt's white. You just drive off the road. You're going till April. See ya, okay? <laughs> So we're all going two miles an hour so you don't die, okay? And you drive, and then on the side of the road, they had a big flashing yellow sign. Caution, caution, really, thank you. Uh. All right. So I keep going, and then there's a big flashing yellow sign up further. Caution, beware of squalls. Squalls? What's a squall? I'm in the middle of nowhere. I could die in any minute. But now I gotta be on the lookout for some lost Indian woman with an Amber Alert? I grew up uh, uh, in this little town in Hornell, and uh, I always, I always believed in, I was, always, I was raised to always believe in God, but I, I always trusted that God would take care of me. And he knew what I needed because we had a thing called a snow day. <laughs> Applaud if you know what a snow day is. Oh. 
Because I'll work, I'll work down south. I'll do work. I'll do shows down in Florida. I talk about a snow day. They think it's a day that drugs are delivered. <laughs> like I said, no, 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 no. A snow day. It's a gift from God. The day that I'd wake up, look out my bedroom window, see snow piled halfway up the window, and I'd say, there's a very good chance I'll not be going to school today. <laughs> my bedroom was on the second floor of the house. <laughs> and I'd run downstairs and sit in front of the radio. The radio's where they announced the schools that were canceled, and they'd announce my school canceled, and this is when I started to question if my mother really loved me. <laughs> Because you have to think about this. This is, this is the worst day of the year. It's a blizzard. There's 40 mile an hour winds. It's sub-zero. But she insisted I go outside and play. <laughs> she stuffed me in my snowsuit, sent me outside to play in my oh-so-flexible snowsuit made out of nylon. Imagine falling on an icy hill in a nylon snowsuit. <laughs> Might as well be made of Teflon. <laughs> Wasn't that the Bennett boy? He fast. That boy fast. <laughs> he flying. He flying. So she wasn't the biggest problem. The biggest problem was a scarf. My mother knitted me a scarf. Had to be 20 feet long. And she'd stuff me in my snowsuit, wrap the scarf around my face like she's going to pull start the lawnmower. <laughs> but she'd always leave a little crack by my right eye. And she'd take my glasses and put them back on the outside of my scarf. It's amazing I wasn't beat up more. <laughs> now there were three things to do for snow. Uh, there, was three, there were three things to do on a snow day for fun. Skiing wasn't one of them, by the way. <laughs> I never went skiing until I was an adult. First time I went skiing was actually in Breckenridge, Colorado. And, uh, and on the ski slopes of Breckenridge, Colorado, I found out the basic truth of human nature, which is that good skiers Lie to new skiers. <laughs> they say, I will take you skiing. They never leave, they never take you skiing, they leave you skiing. They take you to, to the top of mountains. Mountains with names like no one has made it yet. <laughs> and Widow's Peak. And they leave you while they ski down the mountain. They jump over moguls, moguls, which I'm convinced are new skiers that did not make it all the way down. <laughs> Now, there were three things to do on a snow day for fun. There were toboggans, sleds, and flying saucers. Now, toboggans were for large families that couldn't afford a sled for everyone. A toboggan is about a 15-foot long strip of varnished wood upon which you can pile three or four generations of a family and allow them to hurtle together to certain death singing the old traditional tobogganing song. If you know it, join with me tonight. Ah! Toboggans had a minor control problem. They told you if you wanted to steer it, you just have to lean. I think we all know how effective leaning is when you're trying to move 1,500 pounds of screaming, flailing flesh out of the way of a tree. We lost a lot of good Catholic families that way. Old-fashioned Catholic families in the 1960s, 15 kids in a two-bedroom house. One bedroom referred to as the production chamber. <laughs> the other little more than a storage shed. <laughs> I grew up in a small family. We were Presbyterians. I remember asking uh, Santa one year for a, for a sled, for a flexible flyer sled. And apparently, there was a mix-up in the orders department at the North Pole. I received a flying saucer. Now, a flying saucer is a large, round aluminum. It's concave. It's a wok. It's a wok. It's a wok. Apparently, Santa felt I need my own Chinese frying pan. No little boy's Christmas is complete without stir fry. Yes. I took it to the top of the hill. I sat down. My little kid legs crossed. My little kid arms crossed. And if you know anything about I'm flying saucers, you know you only ride them like this once. <laughs> Right, what's wrong with the pictures? The handles. I couldn't see the handles through the crack in my scarf. I had no peripheral vision. I didn't know I had an option to grip the walk tight to my butt. 
get my cheeks going back and forth, first couple of feet down the hills, kind of fun. After that, physics takes over. <laughs> With velocity, you develop a rotational factor. The whole world's a white blur flying by the crack in my scarf. Every few seconds, you see your parents pointing at you. I hit a bump, I get thrown off, snow suit is the ice, I'm gone. I went under a fence, ended up in a ditch. I'm just laying there. That's it. I'll just lay here and wait for the angels to come and take me away. Then you hear a sound off in the distance. Must be, must be the angel's wings, feverishly beating. It's the flying saucer catching up. Remember when you were a kid, you'd scream and no sound would come out? The only sound we tried to breathe? Moose are coming out of the tree line. Life was simple when you were seven years old. All you had to do to make something feel better was rub it. And we follow that windstorm up with some snow. You want some good comedy. I want you to come to Seattle. We get a half an inch of snow. You'll see the dumbest population you've ever seen in your life. People just parking their car on a bridge, walking home. That's it, I'm leaving it. I was in downtown Seattle. I saw on Fifth Avenue a front wheel drive, Honda Civic tire chains on the rear wheels. I wish I was making that up. I just want to go over there, open up that door, reach in and go, you are so ignorant, I can't believe. Is that a barbecue in your back seat? You better not smell bacon. Ladies, admit this too, you're walking around in the snow and ice with your husband or boyfriend, hold on to the arms, she won't slip, but basically your attitude is, if I'm going down, this idiot's going with me right here. Yeah, I figured that one out right away. Let go, let go, let go! It's slick out here. Jeez. <laughs> no, but I can't drive in snow. I'm horrible at driving in snow. I, what I do is I just do the thing where I follow the guy in front of me. Like if I'm driving in a blizzard, you know, I just lock onto the two little red lights and it doesn't matter where I was going. Now I'm going where this guy's going. <laughs> like, he could drive off a cliff. I'd be like, well, I guess we're dying now. I guess that's happening. Yeah, I don't care. I followed a guy to his house once. I just, I just followed him to his house, got out of the car, was like, can I sleep here tonight? The weather's crazy out there. Saw a guy driving a Prius in a blizzard. That was hilarious. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's a, let's put that on the bucket list. <laughs> he was holding on for dear life on the steering wheel and I could tell in his head he was just thinking to himself, I'm doing this for the environment, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm behind him in a Jeep, you know, like, the environment's trying to kill you. Get out of my way. A lot of avalanches. We have avalanches in Montana. Only white people die in avalanches. I don't get that. Uh, every other race has figured out how to stay out of the way of snow when it's coming down a mountain. Which is funny because we've been around snow the longest. You know, you'd think we'd have figured it out. That's why it's so hard to find any of us. It's like we're the same color. So it's like, I don't know, man, where are they? I grew up in Syracuse, New York. That's the snowiest city in the whole country. And uh, they don't even acknowledge it. I remember as a kid seeing an ice cream truck with a snowplow blade come down the street going, there you go. Okay. <laughs> but I get a little, I always get, I get wound up for the winter games because I'm from the, the, the snow belt. And then, but they got, they got sports I never saw in my whole life. The skeleton and luge and all. I go, I go, hey, if you want to represent the winner I know, put shoveling in the Winter Olympics, right? <laughs> Yeah. Find the best shoveler in the world. And make the finals head to head, not against the clock, head to head. Two driveways side by side. <laughs> Little uphill. Some guy from Russia, some guy from Buffalo. Get him, buddy, go, 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 go. <laughs> Here's the thing, if you win the Olympic shoveling, you don't get a gold medal, you $20. It's $20. <laughs> Tore that driveway up. You mow lawns? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, to, trying to get you in the summer games, hang in there. I'm lucky to be here, too. I'll tell you, this is a true story. My sister almost killed me. Um, uh, do you guys have sisters or brothers? Yeah? Those are, how many of you have parents? Anyone? Yeah? Awesome. We have a lot in common. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, because my sister doesn't know how to drive in the snow. Are you guys good at driving in the snow here? Yeah. yeah, I would imagine so, yeah. We used to, at the time this happened, we were living in the D.C. area, and <laughs> not good drivers out there, including my sister. But uh, it was her car, so I didn't have the choice, right? I was like, let me drive. And she goes, no, it's my car, and I'm going to drive. And there's snow on the ground, and lots, and ice. And I said, uh, all right, let, you know, pump your brakes, downshift, you know. And I'm telling her all day, and all, all of a sudden, she locks them up. We're fishtailing to our death. And, uh, and I'm in the passenger seat pumping my imaginary brake, right? <laughs> this is real. We'd be stopped right now, right? And she has the real one locked up, and she wants to scream, but she can't scream because of the brother-sister rivalry. She knew that it's my job, you know, as her brother, to tease her because I've been telling her all day to pump her brakes, and she's not, and we're going to die because of it. And uh, I get to tease her. But she didn't, um, she, she didn't scream, but it wasn't really a scream. It was more like Star Trek. She was like, ah. And I wanted to make fun of her for that. But I was in the passenger seat like, ah, 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 Because it was scary. We almost died. I'm, I'm lucky to be here tonight. It's so beautiful here. I just drove around, walked around. What a day we had, huh? You got to enjoy those, boy. And uh, it made me think, you know, I live in, the, I live in New England, and uh, I love it. We had a winter. You guys had a winter. I don't complain. What I don't like is we all have friends and relatives that live in warm climates that like to call us whenever we have a snowstorm just to rub salt in our wounds, don't they? <laughs> oh, yeah, my friend Ken lives in L.A. Every time a snowflake hits the ground, I get a call from Ken, right? Hey, Jim, how's it going? Oh, my God, another blizzard, huh, buddy? <laughs> It's 80 degrees out here, I got oranges growing in the backyard. <laughs> so I called Ken a few months ago. I was like, hey, Ken, how's it going? Yeah, I was watching the news, couldn't help notice your house slide down the hill in the mud. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm buying a sweater, you idiot. <laughs> I'm glad to be out of the Midwest where I live now. We've had a horrible winter. The weather's been horrible. It snowed again on April the 9th been horrible. It was so bad, even the homeschool kids got snow days. <laughs> now I have kids, this was a long winter in the Midwest. In the Midwest, I know we get snow out here and things like that. Snow's awesome, but in the Midwest, we had like 4,000 snow days. I'm not kidding, every day was a snow day, right sir? Yeah, after about 30 of them, because I work in schools too, I said to my kids, I told my daughter, I said, you know honey, Dad loves you, he will always love you, but I think it's time that you and I start seeing some other kids. <laughs> it's okay, right? They're there too. Because I'm not happy because I'm cold. I don't like this, I'm cold. It's not cold to you people, you're white. It's not cold, I'm freezing. Don't, ha, ha, don't get mad, you've seen the Winter Olympics, it's three of us and, and nine counting commercials. So that is your Olympics, I am freezing. Nothing I hate more than cold weather. I hate cold weather. Cold weather, racism, New England Patriots. That's how much I hate cold weather. And I hate the Patriots. <laughs> The Patriots could play the KKK, I'd be like, go Sheets, go Sheets, go Sheets, go Sheets. <laughs> so I am really not happy right now. <laughs> you guys don't understand, I'm miserable, man. I was like waiting for my Uber, and it's not really that cold, but for me it is, and, I'm, and I got my coat on, and I got my, my gloves, and I got my stock hat, I got a scarf on, I'm waiting for my Uber. Uber driver shows up, Dodge Ram 1200. Windows down, he's got a t-shirt on. I was like, this is a man. <laughs> he rolled up, I felt like I was his date. I go, hey, boo-boo, where we going? <laughs> Roll the windows up, boo-boo, it's cold. Roll the windows up. <laughs> I am not happy here at all, man. I don't live in Canada anymore. I live, uh, I live in Atlanta, Georgia now. That's where I live now. I moved there because they had a Six Flags amusement park. That is the only research I did. <laughs> Nobody told me they built it right in the middle of the ghetto. The scariest ride is walking from the parking lot. 
My brother joined me later. He's like, I didn't know Six Flags had valet service. Like, they don't. You just got carjacked. <laughs> It's a big difference growing up in Canada. We get snow every year, man. You guys get snow, you can live in it. It doesn't affect you, right? You can drive. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. They get a half an inch of snow. People go into a state of panic. We got one inch of snow a couple years ago, shut down the entire city. You know how funny that was to a Canadian? I watched people abandon their vehicles. We'll just buy a new one when the snow melts. You realize it's gonna be 70 degrees tomorrow, right? Can't hear you. I'm way to the grocery store to pick up 15 loaves of bread. <laughs> Gotta make sure I'm prepared for this apocalypse. <laughs> Plus, tonight will be a perfect night to get drunk because my children are trapped in school. <laughs> it's like a free babysitter. Go dogs! Good to see all the snow here. We don't get a lot of snow back in North Carolina, but we, we love it when we get it. We like snow so much, we would eat it. Yeah, my mom makes this stuff called snow cream. She makes ice cream out of the snow. That is some hillbilly hagen right there. It's like briars, but with actual briars. And it's not healthy either. She take this big old mixing bowl, a gallon of milk, a bag of sugar, and snow scraped off the molded deck railing. Mm-mm, that is a penicillin popsicle. It will make you sick and cure you. If you live in the South, people always make fun of Southerners. They say, oh, Southern people can't drive in the snow. And that's not fair. It's not like New York or Chicago or here where you have a team of earth plows ready to dispatch at the first snowflake. We got one guy on a riding lawnmower with a two by 10 strapped to the front. He's gotta do the whole county. It's gonna take a while. See him going down the highway on his Toro. Can of Morton salt. Chances are he's not gonna make it to your cul-de-sac. <laughs> Stay home. I don't care where you're from. Uh, we all have one thing in common. We all have some crazy family members. Is that right? Raise your hand if you have some crazy family members. Yeah. Yeah. Don't point them out if they're here. That's... We're glad you came. We're glad you came. Uh, when you come from a crazy family, it's hard to explain the concept of stranger danger to kids. You're like, all right, kids, don't talk to strangers. They're like, what's a stranger look like? How will we know if somebody's a stranger? You're like, oh, uh, if they got long hair, long beard, drinking, smoking, cursing. Uncle Ricky? <laughs> no, no, like if they try to give you candy and hug you for too long. Grandma? <laughs> it's hard to explain. It's really it. Nice to be here. Nice uh, seeing you all. It was a great day weather-wise. That's something we can all talk about, right? Weather was nice today. I, uh, I'm from Chicago, where we get all extremes, and I know it gets pretty cold here, but there's a guy in front of me at the gas station who was complaining, because it was about 88 degrees, and I said, what's going on with that? I was curious. He says, you know what? I don't like this heat. He goes, I realize on a day like this, I'm more of a winter person. I'm like, are you? Yeah, me too. I like winter. I like it when I go outside and I smile and my face rips. You know what? Summer is horrible. <laughs> Wish I could just breathe out of one side of my nose. Wouldn't that be ideal? Like that, and I'm upside down in a ditch in my car spinning. Wouldn't that be fantastic? <laughs> oh, I would love that. I was talking about bad weather earlier. There's a reason why I hate cold weather. And you guys get a lot of snow here, right? A lot of ice, a lot of horrible driving conditions. Last winter, I, I almost wrecked my car. I, was, I, was, I was, couldn't control the direction that my car was moving. It was sliding from one side to the next. And at that very moment, uh, I had this flashback to driver's ed in high school. Remember what they taught you in the old films? How to drive on the ice? <clears throat> when your car starts to slide, steer in the direction of the skid. Great. I'm skidding towards an oncoming semi-truck. Yeah, you know, bring it on. Bring it on. It's weird philosophy. It's, it's like saying, if somebody shoots you, move in the direction of the bullet. After you've been stabbed, fall directly on the knife. It is great to be here because I uh, uh, just got back from a New Year's Eve gig in Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> Minus 34 degrees. About 105 degrees out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Seriously, Duluth, I'm from California. I get hypothermia in the shade. 
What's wrong with these people? I can never live anywhere where it's warmer inside my freezer than it is outside of my house. (laughs) And my same agent who puts me in Duluth for New Year's, Phoenix, Arizona, July 4th week. Yeah. Phoenix, Arizona, July 4th week, 100 and... My rental car came with oven gloves. (laughs) The Arizona state bird roast turkey. (laughs) I don't even think they even have Mexicans and Indians in Arizona. I think they're just well done white people. I believe we're equal. I believe we're different. Look how we define miracles. Each ethnic group defines miracles differently. White miracle is different than a black miracle, is different than a Latino miracle, different than a Chinese miracle or Asian miracle. White miracles, your miracles are usually because somebody was testing nature. You see it on the news. They were cross-country skiing, got caught in a blizzard, barely made it out. Miracle. <laughs> That's definitely a white miracle right there. You will never hear that announcer say, Jose and Leroy were caught in a blizzard. <laughs> Jose and Leroy know that there's snow on the mountain. That's a message from the Lord. Stay off the mountain. <laughs> but I think natural disasters are good. Uh, natural disasters are God's way of keeping us from getting cocky about where we live. I'll give you an example. Californians, right? Californians are so cocky about their weather. They'll call you up in the middle of the winter. Hey, (laughs) how's the weather up there in Michigan? (laughs) Minus 32 degrees. Well, it's 75 here. (laughs) 74 with the wind chill factor. (laughs) (laughs) Can I call you back? (laughs) That was an earthquake. (laughs) You're just staring at me. Grab his tongue! My wife is from California. I'm, like I said, from the Midwest. I took her home, actually, to Chicago uh, for Christmas this year. She had never been a place where it snows before at Christmas. So I know you go to a place cold. You guys know. Uh, You bring a hat. You bring a big jacket, boots. Uh, She brought uh, mittens. (laughs) Mittens. I think mittens are the worst invention in the history of the world. Aren't they? It's like, hey, you know what's better than ten fingers? Four. (laughs) You're just a lobster for six months out of the year, aren't you? Claws, trying to claw things. <laughs> trying to grab people like, hey, can you hold this? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I'm wearing mittens. Are you familiar with them? They're, they're big and puffy, and there's no sensitivity to what you're grabbing. Is it, is it breakable? I wouldn't give it to me. I wouldn't know. You're, you're better off throwing it on the floor yourself. Mittens are so useless that you can't even use a mitten to take off a mitten. You ever see people struggle for a couple minutes trying to take off a mitten and they go... (laughs) You have to eat a mitten when you're through using it. You have to bite it off. That's how poorly (laughs) these things were designed. How did it get invented in the first place? I don't even know. Like, you think about it logically. Hundreds of years ago, people got, you know, cold. Probably the first thing they did before mittens was just put, like, socks on their arms, right? And you couldn't grab anything. You could just hug it and be like, let's go. Come on. (laughs) And then some guy showed up one day, uh, Philip Mitten. And uh, <laughs> I always think they name things after the person that met him. I don't know if that's true. But Philip Mitten shows up, and everyone's wearing their socks, and they're all like, hey, Phil, what's up, buddy? And Phil's like, hey, fellas, look at this. Boop. <laughs> and we're like, holy cow, what a great idea. And he's like, I know. Now if you're cold, you can hitchhike home, and uh, you can thumb wrestle to stay warm. And they're like, can you carry stuff? Not really. No. And everyone thought it was a great idea, except one guy, Thomas Glove. 
Thomas Glove was like, hey, how'd you think of boop? But you didn't think of ding. This didn't come to mind after you started. This is a good start. And then you went nowhere with it. You didn't, you didn't think to do this next, Phil. You didn't, this didn't, come on. This is one fifth of a good idea. You need to go further. And no one looks tough in a mitten. No one. Think of the toughest guy you know. Think you know what I mean? Like a biker, a hell's angel guy. You know, you're scared, you're intimidated. You put him in mittens, you're like, oh, now he's kind of cute. Now he's cute. <laughs> you ever see people driving in mittens? Everyone looks like a little animal. They're like. <laughs> Someone cuts him off. Did he, just... Did he just give me the mitten? No. Look at him, the sock. How are we back there? North Dakota. Yeah. And hey, listen, don't get me wrong. The people are great. But um, last winter, and people ask me if I, if I miss the seasons. I don't. <laughs> last winter in North Dakota, it was minus 36 degrees. That is colder than outer space. I don't miss that. In fact, I think they could combine North and South Dakota into one state and call it nah. Well. It's wrong to raise children in Wisconsin. It is. It gets to be 60 degrees below zero. I know. This that's wrong. This is Earth. <laughs> it's not supposed to hurt to breathe. We have to relearn how to walk every year. It's like, center your body at all times. <laughs> the whole state is people walking around like this. How you doing, Bill? Good, good. I'm good. Center your body. It could be worse, though. I was just down in Myrtle Beach, you know? And they have hurricanes down there. Yeah. And people were coming up to me going, Oh, you're from Wisconsin. Oh, how do you get through those winters? And I'm like, You're from Myrtle Beach. Uh, where's your house? <laughs> I, was, I was trying to explain winter, though, to people that have never seen it, like black ice. Do you guys know what black ice is? Yeah. Okay, that's like when you're driving along, you're like, oh, friction free time. Wow, okay. Ooh, there's that tree. Hope I don't hit it. You know, wee. <laughs> I'm trying to explain to my friends in Los Angeles black ice. It's like, oh, black ice, the most dangerous part about winter. See black ice go the other way? Don't bear black ice. They thought I was saying black guys. <laughs> I know, now they think all white Wisconsin guys are prejudiced, but well, we're not. For crazy, we're, we're, we're little cuddly people from the movie Fargo, you know? <laughs> hey, we're like, oh, so you're a black fella. <gasps> Neat. <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> not that we're tolerant of other people. We're just happy to have someone to talk to you. <laughs> he looks to be a nice enough fella. You, you guys can tell I got the Wisconsin accent, don't you? I know. I use it for birth control. <laughs> Hey, and we don't have a lot of bums out there in Wisconsin because I guess the winter kills off those guys. <laughs> we, we find them thawing out in the spring. Ah. There's so many bums out in L.A., though. Just walking down the streets, like walking through a Dawn of the Dead movie. They're like, ah. You know, I feel sorry for them. I just give them my Canadian change. <laughs> uh, it's going to be here. I live in L.A. It's just like Utah. Um, it's just it's the same... We have snow, too. It's a different snow. Um, don't worry about that. Uh, it's terrible, but um, 